So in this new mission that we are showing today, uh, there is a, a willingness from our side to break the pattern in the game so that you not always do the same thing. You don't always like go to a place uh, and assassinate a target and go. In this case, you think you're going you're gonna to do that, but instead you realize that this is a costume party and your target is actually could be one of three women because all of them are sisters, the, the Boyle sisters. They're all wearing a mask. And uh, so part of the game is going to yourself go into the party with your mask, so it's appropriate, and uh, mingle around with people, talk, talk try to uh, gather clues, and uh, hopefully uh, figure out who is your target. Uh, however, since the game is very uh, freestyle in, the, in, the, in your, the way you want to play, you could also decide to uh, uh, just like go in the party and murder everyone and kill the three women and, you know, surely you will have to kill your target. It's more brutal, it's darker, and the consequences are different, but it's a possibility. So throughout the game, there, are, there is a way to uh, not kill anyone. So uh, here it's true too for the Boyle Party. Once you've identified who's your target, you can elimit, eliminate her in a non-lethal way. To do so, you'll have to uh, figure out that there is a secret lover uh, in the party that wants to uh, uh, take her away. And uh, if you talk to her about that person, you can uh, take her to, the, to a little boat and, uh, and therefore like, uh, eliminate her from the, from the world in a way without killing her. What? <laughs> Yeah, so aside from the very direct, uh, action-oriented kind of playstyle that you could choose as a player, uh, there is other way, uh, such as, uh, you know, if you sneak, if you overhear conversations, you use Blink to uh, teleport from, uh, you know, uh, height spots to height spots, and, and then, like, uh, take your target maybe by just, like, choking them, uh, and, uh, and then like doing other kind of action, including the non-lethal actions, to finish the game. You can literally finish the game without killing anyone, and it is very satisfying. It's hard, uh, but it is very satisfying. I'll have you gripped and put to work in the <laughs> When we created Dishonored, it's a new IP, so it's very hard to communicate to what is special about it. And so there are obvious ways, uh, such as the visuals, uh, obviously. You know, the world is, is its own world, and like the... The, uh, the style itself, the, the palettes and the treatment of the textures, that's the only thing that is easy to communicate. Uh, anything else, such as the multiple play styles and the, the, the simulation approach to the tools and how all these engage the player creativity, oh, this is really hard because it's like some sort of an invisible value to communicate to people until they see it and they try it. So um, I think it, it was a challenge and, and uh, I think by what really we wanted to uh, to tell the players here is that it's a little bit of uh, the game where you play your own way and uh, we provide you tools and uh, you get to ex explore the systems yourself and, and figure out your uh, your own play style. Uh, you know, being like totally brutal and kill everybody or being stealthy and, uh, and, and uh, non-lethal and, and therefore uh, express your morality this way. <laughs> I do think there is a, a French vibe, a French game design philosophy. Uh, I wouldn't say that every French game has got that vibe that you're talking about, but uh, I, I think, yeah, I mean, like, obviously, the, the Alone in the Darks and the Another World were, uh, were really great, and, and, you know, they were inventing new, new things, really, things that were never been seen before. And I think like the sensitivity of the French developers is usually more towards the art and the emotions, uh, maybe less on the production and, and, uh, and packaging it as, as something that is, um, uh, you know, finished and, and playable. In the case of Dishonored, it's really uh, uh, awesome because it's the association between uh, a lot of European developers, not only French, but like European in general, and also developers in America. So it's been a, it's been a, you know, some sort, some sort of an international collaboration where uh, hopefully it will, you know, leads to the best results.
we deliberately uh, treat the outsider as uh, as mysterious, like he's neutral in a way. Is uh, is you know is the god and the devil at the roll into one character? Is uh, is more like an observer than a, than a judge. He uh, gives you access to the powers. He explains to you uh, that runes will allow you to acquire more powers. And then he comments on whatever you do in the game, and like uh, not in a judging way, but just like he comments. And so you will see him uh, from time to time, and uh, not everything is explained about him, uh, but he's present in the game. <laughs> Debated for a long time if we should have uh, some sort of a try before you buy um, area when it comes to uh, acquire and upgrade powers, and we. We we did we decided not to because we think it's uh, it's a little more impactful in terms of uh, you know the emotional impact of like having to choose and then stick to your choice this rather than just like okay I'm gonna go back to the store and, and trade it back with a, for another power uh, which a little more like uh, you know suddenly feels a little more like a game so th that, it, eventually that was a deliberate decision but there's no mode where you can just have all the powers and and uh, and play with them at the same time. Uh, other than rats, fish, and people, you can possess dogs. Uh, River Crust, which is a, a, a monster that you will see in the game. Um, anything that is alive and, and uh, within distance. <laughs> Never gets old. <laughs> it's. What is my favorite thing about the game is a really hard question to answer because there are so many uh, little things really that, that make this game for me. And uh, some of it is, you know, a lot is the sum of all those little things. And, and so the moment where you, you make a plan and try to act on it and things go a little wrong, but still you survive and, you, you know, something awesome emerges from it because like of all the way the systems interact with each other and surprise you and makes the player feel like it was his own experience. That's really, you know, fundamentally that's what I love about that game. Now, you know, I could also talk about like the moment where you can blink to a target and assassinate him and see, you know, the, the feel, the, the, the physical, all the animations, the way the, the contact with the, with the target feels and, and in, from a first person standpoint feels really satisfying. So that is good too. You're a scandal in that mask. I like a man with poor judgment. Great uh, voice cast for sure. Uh, we have Chloe from uh, from uh, Key Cast, that, uh, you know, who plays one of uh, our key characters, uh, the little girl that we see in the, on the videos. Uh, and it was really fun to work with her. So uh, and we have other other actors too. <laughs> The, the PC version is playable, by the way, with a with a joypad, and uh, and also uh, the the interface is totally different. Uh, it's been you know the, the the sensitivity of the the auto targeting and all those things have been uh, specifically designed for PC, so the the difficulty uh, is addressed. Dishonored comes out on October 9th for PS3, Xbox 360, and PC. Thank you.